I wanted to make this video to give you guys a better idea of what to expect on exam day. If you're new here, you probably saw my previous video where I attempted the OACP exam last weekend and I failed with 60 points. So it was pretty close attempt and this video is essentially me talking about some of the experiences on that attempt. I'm not gonna be talking too much about the details of my exam that video is going to come later this video is more on the preparation and the proctoring during the exam more sort of the administrative stuff that you would expect to encounter um, on the oscp exam so let's get on to it uh, what is the oscp it's a 24-hour exam you have to hack into five machines and the machines are worth various point values. So you've got two machines worth 25 points each, two machines worth 20 points each, and one machine worth 10 points each. And in total, you have to get 70 points to pass the exam. Who is the OACP for? If you're thinking about getting the OACP, essentially the OACP is a certification to get a penetration testing job. It's a very well respected certification in the industry and it really breaks down that HR filter if you are applying for your first penetration testing job. So when you are booking the exam, I would really recommend you book ahead. Probably if you want to pick a particular time when you want to start the exam, I would book even a month ahead of your exam, especially if you want to take it over the weekend because the time slots really start filling up when you get closer to your exam date. I think I booked my exam about two weeks before and I could only pick an afternoon start time. So you have the ability to book three times in the exam portal. You probably can book more times. You will just need to email Offensive Security so they can give you that option to do so. Essentially, don't be afraid to commit to a time early on. And if you have to rebook, you can just rebook it. It's pretty painless if you have to do that. Now before exam day, I have to stress you should read the OSCP exam guide on the Offensive Security website. The exam guide is pretty detailed in their requirements and that and for the reporting, there is a lot of steps that you have to go through to submit a valid exam report. And if you make any mistakes during the submission of that, they are gonna fail you and they are very strict on that. So read the OSCP exam guide very carefully. On exam day, some of the things you should think about is you should pick a location that has a reliable internet connection. You probably want a backup internet connection as well just to cover all your bases. And you'll want easy access to food and water as well because it is a 24 hour exam. You don't really want to waste time and energy thinking about what food you wanna get on the exam. Have that all prepared the day before and have it easily accessible for you during your exam. So the proctoring. So 15 minutes before your exam start time, you are going to be sent a link to log into the offensive security proctoring software. So the software can be run on Firefox or Chrome. If you're running on Chrome, you have to install a plugin for the software to work. So if you're planning to do it in Chrome, I recommend you installing this uh, Janus Web TRC screen sharing plugin beforehand, just so you don't have to fiddle around with that during the exam. I've heard some people having issues with either Firefox or Chrome crashing during their exam and having to restart the proctoring software. Myself, I didn't have any issues with that. I used Chrome and that was fine. And that was actually uh, something that someone else recommended me as well um, to use Chrome. I didn't have any issues. Um, it may be different for you, but 
yeah, have both ready just in case. So once you log on to the proxying software, your webcam is gonna switch on and you are going to select all your screens one by one and click share so the proctor can see all your screens. So in the proctoring process, that's 15 minutes before your exam time, they are gonna go through some steps for you to set up before you are allowed to start your exam. So to start off with, you are going to hold your government issued ID to the camera so they can record and confirm your identity. Now, some people have said that when they were going through this ID verification process, the proctor couldn't see their ID properly. So also have a copy of your ID on your desktop. So just a photo of the front and the back of your ID, just in case the proctor cannot see your ID through your webcam properly on the day. After they confirm your ID, you are going to pick up the laptop and show the proctor four corners of the room that you'll be doing the exam in. And you have to show your desk and possibly show under your desk as well. Um, I didn't actually have to do that, but I've heard some people having to show under their desk. And also, they're gonna say no electronic devices near your workstation, which is kind of dumb because you have access to the internet anyway, but that's one of their rules. So uh, put your phone away out of arm's reach before you start your exam. So on your exam, at the exact time that your exam starts, you're gonna receive an email with VPN credentials to the lab environment. You're also going to receive a troubleshooting script that's going to come with your VPN connection. You'll have to run that in Bash and give the output to the exam proctor in chat. After that, you are free to navigate to the exam control panel and start the exam. Now, I'm going to make a point here to read the information in your exam control panel very carefully, especially the part that is talking about the buffer overflow room. If you've done a lot of practice with buffer overflows, all you need to do is read the exam material very carefully in your control panel and you should have no problems doing your buffer overflow. During the exam, your proctor can see you through your webcam and all your screens. The proctor cannot hear you, so you can say whatever you want and um, people possibly can walk behind your computer and do whatever. The proctor cannot see or hear any of that. When you wanna take a break, you have to type in the chat you like to take a break. You don't really need to wait for them to respond. All you need to do is type in the chat, you're taking a break, and then you can get up from your desk and walk away from the computer. Once you return, all you need to do is type in the chat that you're back, and then you can essentially resume your exam. That is pretty much the only interaction that I had with the proctor after I did the initial proctor setup. So it's not really that inconvenient at all I found with a proctoring software. The only thing is the webcam light is just on the whole time and some of you might find that annoying. I found that pretty annoying like a couple of hours into the exam but after that I kind of got used to it and I didn't really notice it anymore. It's okay to turn off your computer at any time during the exam. All you need to do is say you wanna take a break and you can shut off your proctoring software, turn off your computer and do whatever you want. I had a couple of instances on my exam where I accidentally closed Chrome and then I just opened it back up again and the proctor didn't really say anything on the chat. So that's fine if it temporarily disconnects. And another thing I've noticed is you probably can even move to another location if you wanted to during the exam because the proctor changes from time to time and also they don't ask to see your room again after that first scan of the four corners of the room. Exploits. Now, this is what you need to 
record during the exam because it's going to be pretty hard to record this stuff after the exam if you haven't done so while you're running the exploits so for unmodified exploits all you need to do is provide a link to the exploit if you've modified the exploit in any way you're going to have to provide a link you are going to provide the command that you use to generate the shell code and you're also going to include the full modified code and then a short explanation of why that modification was needed to submit flags you have to submit them to the exam control panel and you have to get screenshots of those uh, flags in your terminal as well this is very important because people have failed because they have failed to get the screenshots of these flags so you want to cat these flags out and also provide the host name and the IP address and a who am I command on essentially the same screenshot. So this is basically two commands that I use to cat out the flags and then get my screenshot for Linux and Windows. General tips during the exam is take breaks. This is so important. In my exam, I probably took too few breaks um, when I think about it take breaks um, take longer breaks the 24 hours it's a really long time i don't feel that um, you can actually fail from running out of time i think you fail because you run out of ideas and your brain goes dead that's why you fail not because you run out of time so take breaks try to keep your brain fresh and a thing that helps with that is have a timer so i didn't actually have a timer during my exam attempt and i kind of regretted it because sometimes i would just jump from one box to another too quickly and sometimes i would spend way too much on a particular issue that probably was a rabbit hole so having a timer to limit yourself to work on a thing just for a set amount of time before you move on to something else is probably a good idea and it's a piece of advice that i've heard repeated by other people before so during the exam you want to take skeleton notes as well take screenshots as you go so that you can have something to review when you're doing the report section of the exam after the exam, you can contact your proctor anytime if you want to end your exam early. And after that, you have 24 hours to submit your penetration testing report. You want to read the report requirements very, very carefully. You have to um, submit it in a PDF format, zip it up, and then upload it, and make sure everything is in order in terms of there are no corruptions going on you've got all your screenshots you've got all your exploit code in the exam report and double check that because you don't want to get over 70 points and then fail because you didn't read the report requirements clearly so do that very carefully and it should be good as long as you reach 70 points so that's it for my video on what to expect during the OSCP exam. I'm going to come up with another video very soon talking about my exam experiences and what I think went wrong in my exam. I'm going to take a bit more time to just sort of digest the exam experience a bit more um, just to sort of get my thoughts around that before I come up with a video on it. So. Look out for that video very soon and I will catch you next time.